morning everybody or afternoon whenever you've seen this Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing and I am back in the kayak I'm gonna be over here just launched from this uh, little boat ramp over here next to San Luis Pass I'm gonna be putting in San Luis Pass and fishing around the pass a little bit today if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so we are going to be fishing with some live croaker yeah so I'm gonna start off and I have a, a bay banger from Woody's Philip Tackle Company have a bay banger set up, so we're gonna start off fishing with live croaker on that this morning. It's a beautiful day though. Nice, beautiful day. Wind is calm. I'm out here with Charles from D Dirty Bay Fishing, so you can check him out. Don't forget, I got all kind of links in the description section. There's a link to my new Patreon page. I have links to Charles and my, my social media outlets as well. So description section, click on down there, click on some links. You want to see what I'm using, see what I'm filming with, see what I'm fishing with. Uh, most of all that stuff is down there for you guys to look and click and answer any questions you may have. But we are going fishing on this beautiful, beautiful morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Would you subscribe? Could you subscribe? Won't you be my subscriber? <laughs> Yay! Please won't you be my subscriber. And I'll sit there. All right, so we got some birds diving right in front of us. I want to see what's going on. I have a spoon. I did bring croaker like I said before, but I'm going to toss a spoon in there and see what's rolling we're about three foot of water so i'm not too sure where it's at you know uh, where the depth is up, up, up ahead because st louis pass has all these different cuts and guts and stuff like that so um i'm gonna creep up we have i guess some are i don't know what kind of birds they are but some are seagulls like most of them are gonna be seagulls i don't see a lot of i don't see any live birds mixed in yeah maybe one or two but we're gonna give it a shot. Water temp is 84 degrees. We're about three foot. So the key is when you are trying to cast on birds where they're diving at, the key is you don't necessarily want to run through where they're at. So I always start on a little bit of the outside to kind of see where the fish are. Because I don't want to scare the birds off. Because the birds are telling me where the fish are. So my cats a couple times on the outside before I start moving closer. It looks like rain, but there's no rain. It's how much bait is around. There's bait all around us. Let's see if we can. It might be rain. No cloud above me. Ah, oh, man. They're whacking it. There we go. Lady fish. Got off. Look. <laughs> that's his that's his inside. That's uh that's unfortunate for that guy. Um yeah. You ain't got no scrimping license. Now I'm at two feet. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. He's on. <laughs> I couldn't catch up to him. Oh, did he get off? Yeah, he got off. I couldn't catch up to him at first. It's a ladyfish, I think. Might be able to land it. I was just trolling my line behind me. And, uh, this lady hit. Oh, there she goes. Woo! Spit it out. Damn, they're thick. They're eating good. Woo! 
Yeah, I was just trolling behind me, and I do this a lot when I'm moving from place to place. It's not something that I normally do, or I fish like this, because you got to constantly be moving non-stop. So, you know, you can troll anything behind you, honestly. Uh, I'm sure there's techniques and tips. I'm not very well versed in trolling, uh, but I will. Uh, even if it's a shrimp or it's a cork behind me, corks are always easier to troll because you don't get hung up. So, you know, it's off the water. But I'm just trolling this line and another ladyfish hit. It's like there's a lot of ladyfish out here today. I hope that's not going to be the case when we start throwing this croaker. Hoping that we can get into some trout. Um, you know, possibly. You know, not looking for a stringer full, but I'm looking for, you know, maybe two. Two or three. I uh, wouldn't complain at all about that. Hit it right when I was bringing in the boat. I don't know what it is. Oh, nice. A little speck. So I get him. Uh. Yeah. Charles just had him. I think he had the trout. So I was trying to see if he could bite a second time. But yeah, he hit it right at the boat when I was bringing it in. So. Little guy. Boop, 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 boop. Get my hand on there. I hate holding on their gills like that, you know. Attitude. They break their dang neck, you know. I ain't never broken their neck, but I'm always afraid to. I feel like it's going to. Yeah, it's 15 and a half. Good, that's a keeper. 15 and a half, you can keep them? Yeah. All right. Double check. Double check. 15. Yep. Yeah. 15 or yeah. oh little oh wow now this is just crazy to me this boater came between us and the grass line and we are casting at the grass line now these GoPro are recorded in wide angle lenses which means things are a lot closer than they they appear if I stand up and look at my feet, I look like I'm about 7 feet, 8 feet tall maybe. We are literally maybe 20, 25 feet from the grass line. We are casting into the grass line and working the entire area down. Now, what is interesting to me, and I don't do this often. Uh, I'm not trying to be complaining or anything like that. But what is interesting to me is if... Charles and I are working our way down this grass line. Charles sees this drain. So he starts moving. Actually, it was this drain, I believe. But he starts moving in the direction of the drain. That boat is here. And he is facing this way. And he is moving away from the grass line. When he turned around and looked and saw us coming down the grass line, casting, 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 he turned his boat around. And he quickly started moving in this area. Once him and Charles locked in, he slowed down and then slowly started moving between us and the grass line. <laughs> you can see how much room. And yes, I know there's a sandbar here and a sandbar here. But you can see how much room there is between this grass line and that grass line. I'm not going to give anybody an excuse for doing something as dumb as that. As he went through this area, it was very nice to see 
that he ended up running aground and himself and a couple members members of his party had to get out and push his boat because they ran aground. That was bittersweet. Yeah, there's that guy right there. And then goes. Push the. Yep. Now y'all stuck. Now they're stuck. That's funny. I felt them hit it and it came back with small red, undersized. Try to get out the way in case there was another one. I think I got a little bit of a hit. Yeah, that's why I try to move. Got a little one. Call a little guy. Got him on a croaker. Little bay banger right there. A couple pops and he's he slapped it. Yeah, I think he'll be close. Oh, snucky. <laughs> Can I borrow your measuring board, please? Thank you, sir. I'm gonna fall down. Yeah, that's about 21. Oh, it's small I am. Twenty-one and a quarter. My man! My man! You know what? I might do a catch and cook. I might have to put him on a half shell. That's a good eater, man. And I might have to put this guy on a half shell. I brought the bag of ice out. So I might have to go and use it. You know what I'm saying? And bring it for nothing. Then buy a bag of ice for nothing. All right, so you know you get live bait, and you think you're just gonna smoke it, right? And that hasn't been the case at all for us today. We really grinded it out. I mean, we've been grinding for a while, and just the water. I think just the water is just so dirty. But you know, that's nice. I'm gonna put that guy and put that guy on the grill. I think. I'm gonna clean them up and put them on the grill for the morning. So, might be a little clip from this, and then me cooking them. Be a catch and cook for you guys. Uh, I recently uh, started cooking sheephead, although I never put anything on video. But I recently cooked some sheephead that tasted pretty good. So, and it's all thanks to Katie's Seafood because when I went on the snapper trip with them, Katie Seafood. Well, we ate afterwards, and everything from Katie Seafood that I ate was just fantastic so i said you know what let me try and do this a lot more let me try some more seafood let me open my mind a little bit and my mouth a little wider wider and try and eat some stuff so i'm gonna try that guy out so thanks for uh, i don't know what i'm thanking you for just thank you i mean that let's get fishing